up tonight on News 7. An unconventional driver's test was taken by students, which may have them thinking twice about texting while behind the wheel. See how the town of Sheffield reacted to the devastating news. Plus, learn what teacher in the Northeast Kingdom won Humanities Educator of the Year. News 7 starts right now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Nadine Grimley. We have breaking news in Bradford. And I'm Michelle Frizzalone. Vermont State Police and SWAT teams were called to an abandoned house in the Bradford neighborhood this afternoon. State Police have confirmed that fugitive Sean McGurk, who has been wanted by the Vermont State Police in connection with a high-speed pursuit in two states, is now in custody. We have the latest from Jared Richardson, who is on scene now. We have very few details about the situation that happened in Bradford this rainy afternoon, but here's what we know so far. Vermont State Police and the SWAT team showed up to an abandoned house on High Street in Bradford, which is about a half mile away from the downtown area. Witnesses told us that they showed up around the lunchtime hour and have been at the house all day. We talked to one state police officer and he briefly told us that a possible fugitive from the law was at the residence on High Street. The situation just ended around 5 o'clock, and they do have a fugitive in custody. Now a press conference is going to be held later this evening, and we'll be there and have a full update on tomorrow's newscast. For right now, reporting in Bradford, Jared Richardson, News 7. The human remains found in Wheelock are indeed those of Mary Pat O'Hagan. Members of the town of Sheffield are relieved that Pat has been found, but wish she was found alive. Yesterday at a press conference in Waterbury, the Vermont State Police confirmed that the human remains found in a wooded area off of Horn Road were indeed those of Mary Pat O'Hagan. Police would not say how she was killed in order to protect the integrity of the investigation. You know, at this point in time, somebody um, is responsible for murder of a 78-year-old woman, and they're still at large. Um, people should take precautions as they normally, normally should. Um, you know, we're, we're attacking it at full speed. We have a full complement of detectives working on it, and we're going to continue to throw the assets into it as, uh, as needed. Needless to say, the town is devastated with this heartbreaking news. It's, it's too close to home, and uh, it's devastated everybody here. Um, security, everybody's looking at security of their homes every day now, and, you know, you catch yourself double locking your doors or check, double checking your doors before you go to bed, and making sure if you open the window, you secured it before you go back to, you know, before you go to bed. We're relieved that she was found, but we're not relieved in the condition that she was found in. And there's still a huge fear factor in just such a small, close-knit community. The lady was a pillar in our community, and nobody deserves to be hurt. You know. Stay with News 7 and News Link for updates as we receive them. 45-year-old Robert E. Pierce of Brattleboro has been accused of sexual assault on a minor younger than 16. The arrest follows what authorities call an extensive investigation by the police and state departments for children and families. He was jailed overnight for lack of $50,000 bail and is scheduled to be arraigned today in Vermont Superior Court in Brattleboro. Conviction carries a possible prison sentence of life and no less than three years and up to $25,000 in fines. For the second time, a teacher at St. Johnsbury Academy has won an honorable state award. The Julie is one of around 70 students who's in Kendra Pops French class at St. Johnsbury Academy. Pops has been teaching for seven years and won the Humanities Award for State Educator of the Year. The $1,000 award is given to a teacher who shows excellence in teaching grades 6 through 12. No matter the subject, if the, the teacher is really excited about it, then it's always easier for someone to, like, to get involved and want to do it. And she loves French. Like, she stands up here and she's so adorable. She runs around and just makes it really visual for us. Pops also brings learning outside the classroom by bringing her students to experience French culture in Montreal and Quebec. We usually take about 12 kids um, and go for the weekend, stay in a youth hostel in the old town and 
go to some museums and eat some French food. Students even have pen pals and handwrite notes to people in Africa and email letters to others in France. We have pen pals every year in France and also in Senegal this year um, through a Peace Corps volunteer and we have some former Peace Corps volunteers coming in to speak to us. And Headmaster Tom Lovett says her dedication to the classroom is only one reason why she won this prestigious award. A great honor and so I always say some of the glory that shines on her spills over onto us and so we're really pleased to have a teacher of that quality here. When I asked Pops what she will do with the reward money, she says she hasn't thought about it, but maybe will take a trip to Canada. And as for Julie, she will continue to take Pops' French class this year and next. And the 8th Annual Victor R. Swenson Award will be given to Kendra Pops on November 13th in Stowe at Stowe Flake Mountain Resort. Republican Secretary of State candidate Jason Gibbs received a ticket for failing to stay in his lane after he drove his car into a ditch off Vermont 100 near his home in Duxbury on September 17th. According to police, Gibbs fell asleep while driving. The candidate said he reported the accident about six hours after the incident, saying, quote, the only damage was to my car, so I figured I'd just get a tow in the morning. And now LSC meteorologist Garrett Combs takes us around the Northeast Kingdom with his forecast. Garrett? Thank you, Michelle. And good evening, everyone. Lots to talk about here at the Weather Center, so we're going to get right down to it. A little shower outside the station. 50 degrees is our temperature, our dew point a very moist 45, and our winds are out of the west at around one mile an hour. Very light winds. Clouds outside the station today, all because of a low pressure center that's situated right here off the New Jersey coast. That's been throwing all of these clouds back our way. And back off to the west is the upper level portion of this low pressure area. It's kind of a one two punch, as it were, for the precipitation that's been involved in this. By 7 o'clock tonight, we'll still see the rain associated with this coming down. 57 degrees will be our temperature. The rain is going to last through the overnight into, to, into Thursday morning. 53 degrees your midnight temperature. And by the time you're up at 7 a.m., make sure you have your umbrellas handy. It's going to be a wet one. 50 degrees is our temperature. I wish I could say the rain is going to be going away at some point soon, but unfortunately that's just not the case. And behind this, we do have a cold front moving through our region. It's going to bring us a few chills for the weekend, and I'll have your full Major League Baseball playoff update forecast coming up in just a few minutes. For now, Nadine, Michelle, back to you. All right, thanks, Garrett. There's more to come after the break. Find out what is going on with the Town Hall in Daneville and the improvements they are working on. And a workshop in Lindenville is giving information about how you can save your home from foreclosures. Please stay with us. There's a place not so far away, a place where you don't have to keep the volume down. You'll find all sorts of creatures in this place without have to. The silly you, the proud you. You may even meet the curious it's you. Tickling me. You! 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 Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place. Come to the forest where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Every day, our brave troops and their families stand up for us. For years, we've asked so much of so few. Now we have a chance to serve these heroes. To give time, offer comfort, or lend a hand. To ease the burden on a military family. Let's honor their service by volunteering ours. So my uncle calls and he says he's dizzy and he's losing his balance. I'm like, uncle, you want me to take you to a doctor? He's like, no, I'm going to look up the symptoms. I said, your symptoms are you're dizzy and you're losing your balance. So he said, I can't get on the internet because my arm is numb. I said, well, use your good arm and dial 911. Stroke's no joke. If you or someone you love is showing symptoms of stroke, don't wait, because it might be too late. Dial 911. Time lost is brain loss.
Barnett Zoning Committee has consented to a pet crematorium being established in their town. At Tuesday night's meeting, the committee held a hearing for a pet crematorium being moved into Barnett by Craig and Barbara Calameo. The crematorium is currently located in East St. Johnsbury. While answering questions, Calameo, who is a veterinarian, spoke of how the crematorium works and assured to, the, to those present that you'll never know it's there. The planning committee voted to pass the action with no conditions of use. With these tough economic times continuing to drag on for Americans, many homeowners are still finding themselves looking for relief from a variety of wide financial strains. News 7's Kyle Grover reports. Foreclosure is one of the biggest fears for a struggling homeowner. And despite Vermont having much fewer of them than more populated areas of the country, the fact remains that there are indeed foreclosures happening right here in the Northeast Kingdom. Luckily, there are local services available to help. The Gilman Housing Trust in Lindenville serves Essex, Caledonia, and Orleans counties, helping homeowners avoid scams and foreclosure. There are no fees for foreclosure prevention. Um, anybody who is asking a fee to assist you with a foreclosure situation um, is not legit. We're here to pretty much give people an overview of what options that they have available to them. It's very hard when you deal with servicers of mortgages. We're here to kind of act as that go-between to assist you with your mortgage servicer and let you know of the options that you might not know about. The Gilman Housing Trust hosts monthly homebuyer education workshops, along with also assisting homeowners individually who are running out of options and need help avoiding foreclosure. We tell customers right up front, there's absolutely not a guarantee that this is going to stop. It's in your hands to work with this, and we'll give you the tools that you need to get there. If you do find yourself in a potential foreclosure situation, the Housing Trust stresses that you come to them as soon as possible. If you come to us the day that you're being served, you're due of sale and, you know, you have to move out, there's not much we can help you with. But if you come to us before you're going to miss that first mortgage, all the doors are open for you. In Lindenville, Kyle Grover, News 7. To learn more about what the Gilman Housing Trust has to offer, you can call them at 802 535-3555 or visit www.myvthome.org. Over $12 million is going to New Hampshire families who could potentially lose their homes. The money is coming from the Emergency Homeowners Loan Program and will be used for people who have fallen behind in mortgage payments due to unemployment, income cuts, or medical emergencies. $50,000 is the maximum loan under the program. To be an eligible borrower, one must have suffered at least a 15% reduction in income and be able to afford their mortgage payments prior to that loss. The town of Danville has made several improvements on their town hall over the past decade. And now the town is making another one. News 7's Evan Coughlin explains. The Danville Town Hall was originally built at the turn of the century. And just like any other building, it requires upkeep. Large cracks in the front porch of the building opted the town to reconstruct it. The cracks continued to get bigger and uh, we decided that uh, it's going to take more than just a little uh, surface work. The porch bears the load of four columns of the building, so structural integrity is of the utmost importance. We decided we got to do the porch upright. That's our main entryway and, and it's uh, the main focal point of the building. Harold's Concrete was selected as the lowest bidder and started construction on the project on Monday. The process was starting out by removing the handicap ramp, removing the, some of the existing concrete, then jacking up the porch and supporting it in place. The pillars supporting the building had to be jacked up and stabilized. They also added rebar to make the slab last longer. It's been a major project and, and the front porch here or is going to be the uh, about the final part of it. Construction of the porch is believed to be the last major improvement to the town hall over the past two decades. Evan Coughlin, News 7, Danville. Construction on the town hall was paid for mostly by donations, grants, and state funding. The porch is expected to be finished by the first of next week. One Vermont homeless shelter is already dealing with the pressures of a tight budget and a tough economy. But overcrowding has increased that stress leaving volunteers and donors burnt out. 
The Good Samaritan Haven in Barrie is working to ease that pressure by setting a certain housing capacity and helping people move faster into permanent homes. The issue is that there are too many people and not enough help. The goal of the shelter is to become an emergency shelter only, not housing for the unemployed. There's more to come on News 7 after the break. Did you ever think a person could learn so much from driving a golf cart? Students at St. Jay Academy received an eye-opening experience. And I'll tell you when we can expect sunshine to return to the Northeast Kingdom coming up after the break. Please stay with us. duty to serve veterans and military families who serve their country in the most difficult ways imaginable. Together we can say thank you in so many ways. Small acts of kindness mean more than anything. With our support, veterans and military families can face even the most difficult challenges. Let's honor their service with ours. Did you uh, get a call from the coach about those kids who were caught drinking? Not our guys. They know better. Yeah. They know better. Heads up, sport. Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. And welcome back. 59 degrees was our observed high here at the New 7 station for the day on Wednesday. Compare that to our average of 62. We're right on track, a little cooler than we should be for this time of year. Definitely warmer for our average low. 52 degrees was our observed low compared to 40 degrees set earlier in the day. Outside the station, 50 degrees is our temperature, 52 in Portland, 57 in Boston. Temperature is not really varying that much across the area, 53 in Watertown, 55 in Binghamton. Off to our west, 57 in Buffalo, and a cool 52 degrees in Pittsburgh. Now taking a look at the radar, as I said before, we had all those clouds with this low that's off the coast here, and that's been throwing all this rain back into our area. You can even see some shades of the yellow and orange here over the northern Adirondacks, heavier precipitation in association with this. And off to our west, we have a little more rain that's been circulating down in this area here. This is the upper level low. This is the surface low and these two are kind of working in conjunction to bring us all this precipitation for the next couple of days. Now our temperatures across the nation 65 degrees in Denver, 66 in Fargo, a pair of 77s in Chicago, Memphis, 69 in Raleigh. We're the cool spot, 57 degrees in Boston. Now if we look at the national radar we see the same exact things we saw before. We see all this rain being kicked back off the Atlantic to the northwest over our area and what's going to happen is this low pressure area off the coast is going to move its way out to sea but the upper level portion of this is going to make it take its sweet time getting into our region and that's going to provide us the precipitation that we need for the day Thursday into Friday. But once the system finally clears out, we've got a bit of a chill down coming up for the day on Friday. As we see here, we have a cold front off to the west here. This isn't providing any precipitation. All this has been doing is it's been providing us with a bit of uh, cold temperatures. And as the system finally moves out to sea, we see on Thursday that low pressure area will finally work its way in here. And then once the cold front moves its way out of our area, we'll finally see temperatures cool down drastically to below average. If we take a look at our temperatures for the overnight, we'll see temperatures dropping to around 43 to 48 degrees. And we see showers continuing through the overnight period with light winds. For your day on Thursday, we'll see those showers continuing 
uh, temperatures between 53 and 58 degrees with winds out of the west, five to 10 miles an hour. We shouldn't expect much in the way of accumulation out of the rain, maybe between a tenth and a quarter of an inch. And for your, for your night, Thursday night, we'll see those showers tapering off, but once that cold front passes, we'll definitely see temperatures dropping down to between 35 and 40 degrees with winds out of the northwest, five to 10 miles per hour. And if we take a look at our five day forecast, we see temperatures warming back up into the 50s for Friday and conditions look pretty nice for the weekend. 50 degrees for Saturday, 58 degrees for Sunday and a nice looking Columbus Day with temperatures back into the low 60s. We do have another system that we need to keep an eye on for the day. Monday and Tuesday might throw us a spare shower for your late, the later part of Monday. But overall, if we can get past these next uh, couple of days of rainfall, the weekend's looking pretty good. Thank you, All Garrett. Right. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you. A groundbreaking experiment that started in Vermont and migrated as far as Great Britain comes to the Northeast Kingdom this morning. And teens who participated started with smiles and ended gripping their steering wheels with right knuckles. Video journalist Dan Hollis caught the action. St. Johnsbury teens taking driver's ed had a rude awakening bright and early this morning. A police captain from Montpelier was waiting for them at the St. J Academy Fieldhouse to prove to them that their texting skills weren't up to par. In that spirit, the captain rode with the students in a golf cart one by one through a coned in course in two ways, attentive and texting. You definitely had a lot more errors the second time through. Your error rate will go up the second time you drive and your time is gonna slow down. So what's happening is you figure, well, I'll just drive a little bit slower and then I'll be able to do both tasks at once. But even though you're going slower, your error rate's gonna increase. The Vermont Department of Motor Vehicles borrowed the idea for the experiment from North Carolina and refined it, making a standardized system and a manual to go with it. That manual spread, and now participants just like these are texting and driving and crashing into cones like these in America, Canada, and Britain. And even this St. J driver's ed course can make use of it. Um, we're happy to share our materials. Uh, we've done it, as I said earlier, across the country and across North America. Um, we think that we are playing a real productive leadership role. The course requires participants to drive through the cones once with their full attention. It's Island Pond, we do the three second stop. And then to go through again, constantly texting their name and address, while still attempting to follow safe driving practices. Invariably, the students in St. J and the thousands of youth and adults in other locations did significantly worse while texting. Texting, don't stop. Texting. The facilitators don't see any room for interpretation in their data. And they've learned there are three primary kinds of distractions for drivers, mental, visual, and physical. And the problem with the cell phone is it takes all three. It takes your mind away, your eyes away from the road, and your hand off the wheel. So it's very dangerous. It's a habit that really should not be started, and hopefully that's what this will show them. This whole program was started to provide data to support the idea of a texting while driving ban in Vermont. Now that that bill has been signed into law, the program endures to make a point and to teach drivers a lesson. A couple are expert texters, they told me, and they really are. And one of them had a, almost a perfect message, uh, even though they knocked over a ton of cones, but the message was pretty good. In St. Johnsbury, Dan Hollis, News 7. One former city official is taking his case to the Vermont Supreme Court. Joshua Hanverger, who was dismissed two years ago from being the Winooski city manager, went before the state's highest court. His lawyer is telling justices that Winooski officials improperly removed Hanverger. Reports say that Hanverger is owed more than $150,000 in back pay. The city of Winooski's attorney says the city's decision to dismiss Hanverger should stand. Concord's planning board is deciding if they should grant a permit to a local resident. The planning board has their hands full with one resident who has disregarded the zoning laws and built a barn against the code of the town bylaws without a permit. Concord's bylaws state that a structure built in a flood zone must be built up higher than the town's base flood elevation. Zoning ordinance says that he has to, that the elevation of the lowest floor has to be a higher than the base flood elevation, and we don't know either one of those here. Announce their decision next week. A municipal pension plan that racked up almost $9 million is in shortfalls is stirring calls for an investigation in South Burlington. City Council members say former city manager Chuck Hafter failed to alter them 
to the problem. They have written to International City Council, Council Management Association about the matter. Hafter has accepted responsibility for not informing the council, but denied taking actions to benefit himself personally. The Board of Alderman in Rutland is set to settle a lawsuit brought by a man who was hit with more than 20 pepper balls filed by a police officer. The Alderman voted 7-1 to one to pay 24-year-old Jamek Hart $45,000 to settle the lawsuit filed against the city three months ago. Hart was arrested early January 1st for disorderly conduct. Officer Michael Ness, however, fired more than 20 pepper balls at Hart after he was yelling at officers from the cell. And Ness, however, resigned on March 1st. In 90 seconds, see the highlights and scores of your local high schools in their soccer matches yesterday. Plus, find out how the Lady Vikings did in their field hockey game. New 7 Sports is coming up next. Ready to go? Yeah, but the fire's not out. It's close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I, I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why we're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Honey, the credit fairy doesn't exist. What? It's make-believe. Nobody left anything under your pillow. If there's no credit fairy, then we'll make our credit score go up. We will, by doing things like paying our bills on time. There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Linden Institute Field Hockey has still yet to register a win on the season. They were defeated 7-1 in South Burlington. Goalie Taylor Ward had 18 saves. Spalding edged the Vikings in the final minutes of their game. Emily Chase had scored with three minutes left. St. Johnsbury falls to 2-5 on the season. For local sports teams in action Tuesday afternoon, People's Academy was in St. Jay for a close one as Shunt Evans made eight saves for the Hilltoppers. 0-0 zero zero was the final after two overtimes. Both teams played strong, staying neck-to-neck -neck throughout the game. And Northfield dominated Linden Institute. There were 27 attempted shots made by the Martyrs on the Vikings goalie Ben Nichols. Two minutes into the game, the Martyrs Michael Davidson scored. Shortly after Jackson, Tucker scored another goal for Northfield as the Martyrs went on to win 5 to nothing. Oxbow took a loss from Lake Region last night. Lake Region jumped up to 3 to nothing lead by halftime. Lafalee had the only goal for Oxbow and in the second half, and goaltender Chris Taylor had 13 saves in the 3-1 loss. North Country gave the St. Albans Bob Whites their first win of the season. Nate Stewart and Dylan Columbia both scored for North Country, but it wasn't enough as they were defeated 5-2, dropping their record to 3-6 on the season. And now Garrett Combs will give us a look into tomorrow morning's weather. I will, but first, as I promised before, take a look at your Major League Baseball playoff. Uh, we've got one game going on tonight, and that would be the Divisional Series matchup between the New York Yankees visiting the Minnesota Twins. It's going to be a beautiful night out there, 58 degrees in Minnesota, light winds and clear skies. I unfortunately can't say the same for our weather. You're going to need the umbrellas tomorrow. It's going to be a bit of a rainy day for your day on Thursday, 43 to 48 degrees. 
will be our temperature. And if we take a quick look at our five day, once we get past the cold front moving through Thursday night into Friday, we look to set ourselves up for a beautiful weekend. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s and 63 degrees for your Columbus Day on Monday. So we're going to have some rain. Yes, unfortunately, we do look like we have some rain coming on the way, but like I said, once we get through that, the weekend looks to be perfect. Get out and enjoy it. Check out the fall foliage, pumpkin picking, apple picking, whatever you choose to. Just make sure you get out and enjoy it. It's going to be great. All right. Thank you, Garrett. Thanks, Garrett. That's all we have for today's edition of News 7. Tune in tomorrow at 3 and 5.30 for the Northeast Kingdom's news, sports, and weather. From all of us here at the station, have a great night. For the latest information about the stories you see on News 7, along with exclusive web-only coverage, log on to news7newslink.net. It's Northeast Kingdom news, weather, and sports on your schedule.